Hi again. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is Barry Selby. Give, sorry, let me jump into the topic first, then tell me who, tell you who I am. Get this in the right order. Um, this is episode 789, and the topic today is what makes a good man? What is he about, and why is he needed? And I want to talk about this because this is actually in response to a friend of mine's post, Jennifer, and I'll link her in the comments so she can see this. Um, because her post triggered some stuff in some people and I was very clear that I need to add to the conversation. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself in the right order and then jump into the topic. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. And I am a man, so I can speak from this perspective. And I've been through quite a journey, so I'll speak to that as well. Um, I am a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for women, men and women about relationships, singles and couples. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which is why I'm very adamant about masculine and feminine polarity, which I'll get into as well. Um, and also inspired these talks, which started over two years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. See, it all ties together. And today we're episode number 789, getting closer to the 800 mark. It keeps coming. There's, there's more. There's always, let's put it this way. When it talks to talk, talk about masculine and feminine polarity and men and women and relationships and other stuff like that, there's a lot to talk about. So... 789 talks, yeah, there's a few things there. So today the topic is about what makes a good man, what is he about, what is it, why is he needed? And I wanna speak to this from a point of view initially of what isn't a good man. So let me, let me start on the other side of the coin, which is what it is that a lot of men still are, which I believe, and this is my perception, because it's my talk and it's my, <laughs> it's, it's my, my sandbox, so I'll speak from my perspective. Um, what, what a good man isn't is a myopic, misogynistic, egotistical, um, um, it's a word that's not trying to come through, derogatory? Yeah, that, that works. Type person who treats other people with less regard than he treats, sorry, treats people with lower regard than himself. And in fact, he's always positioning himself to be one up from other people, particularly around women. That's what doesn't make a good man. Let me be clear about that. Some other things also, um, what doesn't make a good man is a man who basically doesn't know how to take charge or lead. And this one of my, was my, one of my uh, lessons over the last, in my history. So I may talk into that a little bit more. Thirdly, what isn't a good man is a man who doesn't feel like he has anything to give or serve or express in the world. Number four, <laughs> I'm making lists as I go along, so I don't have a plan for this. Another reason, what another thing that make, that does not make a good man is a man who thinks that he's in, well, who's in it for himself. I kind of covered that in the first one, but he's really in it for himself, where he will not stretch or exert any energy beyond his own comfort for anybody else, including family members, partners, children, any of that stuff. Um, what also doesn't make a good man is a man who is um, who views the world as a place that you can just take, take, take from and not contribute to. That's kind of like, talks about the previous one as well. So some of these things are, are very related to each other, so I wanted to put these together. So I don't want to keep walking in that mud pile, so let me speak to what, what, let me speak to what does make a good man. Let's start there. And there's any spin-offs that I need to go back to, I'll go back and edit them accordingly. So one thing that makes a good man is a, a good man is a man who has a reason for being on the planet that makes a difference. I don't mean it in, that I don't mean in the sense that he's on, he's, he has a reason for being just to satisfy himself. I'm talking about he has a reason for being that is additive to the world. That can be mission, purpose, calling, um, service, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be necessarily a career. It may be a family even, but a man, a good man is a man who has clarity about why he's here. A reason for being that as an expression in the world that is additive to the rest of the world beyond his own space and in beingness. Contribution is a key part of that. The second thing that makes a good man is a man who knows how to lead. Now, leadership, <laughs> this is an interesting piece too. Leadership for a lot of people is about someone has to be in charge running the show and we just follow and listen blindly to what they're doing. No, that's not what I mean by leadership. This is the thing about leadership. My belief and what I've learned about leadership is it's a leader who supports everybody else. It sounds backwards, doesn't it? But a true leader is a leader who is out in front to make sure everything's safe, as it were, 
but also gets everybody else to come along and say let's go let's go and get everybody else inspired and and um elevated so they can be leading as well see a true leader informs inspires and infuses other leaders as well that's what a man that's what a good man can be now some of these by the way do bleed over to the female side to the women's side of the conversation but i'm speaking specifically trying the right way of saying it of what a good man is because there's a lot of discrepancy in what i believe but what makes a man good or bad or good or good or less than good or additive or detractive or some sort of um, for polarity's sake and having having differences and trying to explain it that way so another quality another um part of the makeup of a good man is a man knows how to well there's three come up once okay let me try and break this down one he knows how to treat a woman with respect dignity and, and equality secondly knows how to be a gentleman which is another piece of the same puzzle and thirdly oh it, hang on okay it just went away let me come back <laughs> the third one is he also knows how to be um Oh, what was that one? It just went out. He'll come back. So anyway, so being gentlemen, know how to treat a woman with respect, equality, and dignity. Ah, yes. This is kind of a blend of the previous one as well, which is basically a, a, a good man knows how to take the lead. And don't mean leadership here, but take the lead in 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 dancing, in relationship, in partnership, in that 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 connection because. Especially currently, that was one of these. This, this, this one of the things that triggered me in the post that my friend posted. I should say in the responses and comments on the post she posted, or the meme she posted. Yeah, you got it. Is that many men have either given up knowing how to lead, have not taken made the effort to lead, have been burnt too many times so they won't lead, or simply just decided to let women take charge because in maybe their experience, and this is part of my own experience in history, is I was around a lot of women who did take the lead. And so, as we men are generally speaking lazy, yes, I'm outing us in front of everybody else, but we men are lazy because we want to just get something done and we're done with it. Most men are not continual strivers in the way of living life, unless it's to complete a very big goal, there's many, many steps. So, we men generally tend to be somewhat lazy. So, if a woman is going to take the lead and, and ask us out to do all those things. We're like, sure, no problem. I did that. Not good. And I paid the price for that. It also thankfully put me on the path I've been on for the last 12, 13 years now, which is why I'm doing the work I'm doing now. So there's, there was a there was a gift inside the turd of that experience, so to speak. Um, another, re another, I'm going to say this is more on this one. This is part of the same thing. A good man knows not to back down when a woman is attempting to take over the leadership because she thinks he won't do it. And this is convoluted a bit, let me explain a bit more. There are times when a woman ha is going to, a woman in a feminine, let me, let me, okay, let me add another piece of the layer. It's starting to expand in my awareness. So one part of this is, I'm speaking more in polarity of masculine energy with being man, feminine energy being woman. The masculine energy leads, when a woman's in her, when a woman's leading, she's in a masculine. And in relationship, that can reverse things. As I mentioned, that's part of my own experience. And I paid the price for that more than once, which is why I shifted and did those work for the last 12, 13 years, as I mentioned. At the same time, when a man is in his masculine and really owns that space, when a woman attempts, attempts to take that place from him because she thinks he can't do it, is when he basically, he doubles down. Not out of ego, but out of truth. Because when a man is really in his masculine, owns his space, around a woman and she nine times a ten she'll feel it anyway and she'll trust him but for women who've been trained not to trust men because many women have been trained not to trust men based on their past experiences when a man takes his space as in his masculine he doesn't move and he will basically weather the storm of her upset continuously if needed because he knows where he stands and a good man who owns that space doesn't collapse under the pressure of that in fact he stands clearer in that place like being a lighthouse in a storm that eventually she will see the light of what he's doing and she'll trust him but it takes time sometimes because again a lot of women have been trained by men who weren't in their masculine to take charge themselves and become more um in the masculine themselves i mean the women i dated were in the masculine i would suggest i don't know exactly all the histories because they basically had to take charge in previous relationships and i know 
the price they paid and the pain they suffered. And I didn't help because I contributed to it. So that's one reason why I'm on this mission, this, this passion, that's why I've done all these talks over the last two and a half years and my coaching. Another part of what makes a, a good man a good man is he knows that what he's here to do is to contribute to a greater good, as I mentioned earlier, but in the sense that he's not so much concerned about having his name as a plaque on front of whatever he produces. It's more about the condition he changes, the environment he shifts, the societal structure he contributes to is changed for the good, and his name doesn't have to be on any of the byline, so to speak. It's not about him, it's about what he does. It's not about his ego, it's about what he delivers and brings and serves to the world. There's another one sitting in there. What is this one? And by the way, um, these qualities I'm listing, listen, listing for the ladies, I hope you're taking these to heart Maybe making some notes for yourself because for some of you watching, won't name names, you may have found that none of these things I'm listing have matched any part, part of your previous relationships. And that's a clue because what I'm offering you here, things that I had to learn myself so I know from the pain of not doing them what works, what doesn't work, but also what doesn't serve and, and what does serve a feminine partner. And the masculine feminine polarity piece, by the way, there's a lot, I've talked about this many times before, and I draw a lot of my inspiration from some of my master teachers I've worked with, including David Data, Alison Armstrong, Satya and Suzanne Raja, um, John Gray, and a bunch of other people. So my, my experiential, my experiential learning and my practical knowledge has come from people I trust deeply, and I, speak, I, I know from my own learnings how the power of the masculine and the power of the feminine is so potent and so necessary for a healthy relationship. But sometimes, as I mentioned, sometimes it's been reversed where the woman was in a masculine, not knowing that's what it was, and the man was in his feminine, not knowing what that was, again, past experience myself, where the relationship was so dysfunctional because neither one was in their natural alignment, but were actually exhibiting the behavior based on what they were raised with or were taught by the conditions they were living in. So many women I know, especially single mothers, has been one of the challenges of a lot of women. Is because, because a lot of single mothers, and I'm going to say this in a polite way because it's really frustrating sometimes to watch, have had to learn to adopt both genders' roles as parents, understandably. I mean, some men have gone through this with single parents, who are single dads too, because by having to wear both hats to parent the child, you sometimes forget where your alignment is. In fact, you forget where your... Um, true centeredness is because you've had to wear these hats for so long so if you've been a single parent for several years you may have found dating to be challenging not just because of your schedule because you're there with a the child the whole time but because you're not sure where to, where your natural residence is for women in your feminine but most likely men in your masculine most likely and I say most likely because as, it, as there are always exceptions to the rules there are women who are naturally masculine and not naturally feminine and men who are more naturally fem mas feminine than they are masculine. But the majority of society, the majority of people, masculine aligns to male, feminine aligns to female. And this is, of course, in heterosexual relationships because in gay relationships, there's masculine and feminine in those relationships too. So in gay male relationships, there's going to be masculine and feminine energy in both men, or in each man, and there's going to be the same thing true in lesbian relationships. So the, the polarity, the gender of masculine and feminine, sorry, the polarity of masculine and feminine overlays the gender of male and female in, in straight relationship paradigms. And that's the piece that makes everything shift. The real core of this, what I'm talking about here, is that men who really know who they are as masculine men, which is not the same as macho men, let me be clear about that. Macho is ego and selfishness. Masculine is, is heart-centered and more spine-driven, like focused, like power, direction, clarity, purpose. That's the key for men to live by. I just ran out of steam for a second. This stuff comes through and I just will get it out. Sometimes it drops off and I have to wait for the next batch to come through. If there is something else to come through, let me see. Um, there's a piece in here. There's a piece in here. There's a challenge. Okay. There's a challenge in this world that we live in that men have to beat up other men to win. That we're going to fight, to compete, to push, to usurp, to even in relationship, steal the woman from another man. That isn't 
First, it ain't polite. <laughs> Secondly, it's not masculine. That's macho, because macho is ego-driven, take, 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 get the most you can, screw everybody else. That's kind of the epitome of the macho male. Sometimes the bad boy's into that umbrella. The masculine man is the man who is living his calling, his purpose, his drive in the world to make a difference. Again, as I said, to, sh to share and serve a purpose, a mission bigger than himself. That comes before, before his relationship. And a true masculine man actually seeks and accepts and appreciates brotherhood with other men who are doing the same thing. Most macho men have their buddies to go drinking with and to judge and, and um, I keep saying derogatize, it's not the wrong word, demean other people, be it women, be it minorities, be it anything else. The masculine man seeks brotherhood with men who have a greater sense of presence, a greater sense of belonging, and a greater sense of delivery of serving in the world, and has respect for others as well. That's where I put my energy, and that's where most of my male friendships are, are resident in, because I can't, I uh, can't, won't, I won't deal with the crap of other, of other men not living in their true nature. I've said it, there, I'm out. <laughs> it's public. For those who know me, know, know me that's true, know that's true. So I just want to speak that part too. There's a lot more to the conversation than this, but I want to give this as a, a starting point, um, as some seeds to plant it for those ladies who are watching to see what sort of man they want to be with, for men who are watching to see where they line up with this and maybe where there's room to grow. Um, if you want to get more help with this, reach out to me. I'll let, you can find me over social media. I'll put a link in the comments for the ladies who want to get some help who get stuck in relationship challenges. Um, That'll be, be a complimentary clarity conversation you can have with me. Otherwise, I'd like to hear from you what you think of this. This is, again, is a, is a, is a starting point of a conversation that can go much deeper. And I've talked about parts of this many times before, and it's in my book as well. Actually, I've got a link for the book in the comments as well. Um, this is perhaps game-changing for some people. For some men listening to this, they're going, I never thought of this before, maybe, or I don't dare deal with this, or some other in the spectrum of choices. For the women watching this, it may be a wake-up call to see what you've been doing differently. Oh, there's one more piece, and here's one more piece. Ah, yes. <laughs> the dating flirtation piece, the courtship piece, I'll drop a piece in about that in a moment too. So before I do that, there's a little teaser. Again, I'll put some links in the comments for a complimentary clarity conversation for women, and my book as well, and also a contact form, you can reach out and talk to me, period. This is my daily Facebook Live. I'm not gonna, make sure I remember that point is gonna talk, oh yes, I know what, yes, I'll, okay, I remember what I was gonna talk about. <laughs> I'll get to that one in a moment, so that'll be my little bonus PS piece. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Replays go to my business page, which is Barry Selby author on, YouTube, on Facebook. And I also put the replays onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You watch my replays, they're actually easy to, easy to find there for the titles are listed more readily than they are on Facebook. That's just the way it's set up. Okay, and if you want to join me live, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page where you can find me, interact, join, etc., etc. Again, I invite your comments and questions under the broadcast. Um, if you want to reach out to me over social media, you can do that. And again, I'll put some links in the comments. And the courtship piece, I want to make sure I do drop this one. This came up as well in my response to my friend's post earlier today. One of the challenges that we have in modern dating times with dating apps, dating sites, and the way we meet is for men and women, for us men, it's an interesting place to play. One, because we can be lazy to a degree because women can actually seek us out. And this is the thing. It's okay for a woman to show interest in a man, but it's required that the man does the courtship, that leads, that chases, that pursues, that invites, that asks out. And then you get to know each other along the way. I've got a whole bunch of stuff in my past broadcast about what I call pre-dates, about dating sequences, stuff like that, that you can look in my previous broadcast for more information on that. But one of the things I talked about before, which is vital, is that one thing we'd lost since we moved into this new um, era of dating is we lost the courtship um, step of the dropped handkerchief. There's something we don't have anymore, which we used to have, which was basically in olden days, and so this is, this is a thing that happened, by the way. In the olden days, back in, like, in the late well, Victorian age in England, and I think probably in the Wild West over here, time-wise, so 
excuse me, 100, 150 years ago, give or take. When a woman was interested in a man, she would drop a handkerchief and he'd pick it up and then they proceed from there. Like basically, to be honest, as men, rejection is a pain we've had to suffer many times just to be transparent about it. So we men have had to deal with that. For women, taking over the role of dating and, and, and courting isn't appropriate. However, it certainly is nice for us men if you let us know you're interested before we actually check to see if you are interested. It's like the thing is, that when we are asking a woman out and we get no, no, no a lot, in simple terms, that shouldn't be painful because when you, when you get no, you just didn't get what you didn't have in the first place. But the pain of that starts to go deep, especially when we've asked a woman out or we've risked our egos to ask somebody out. So in the old days, what women would do was drop a handkerchief. And basically women would initiate the connection, but it would be an invitation for the man to step up and show his um, bravado perhaps but also his, his heart and his compassion and his um, masculine authority so she could check him out in a way and then they could go from there we don't have the same thing in modern times you know the, the modern era in some ways in the dating apps can be something where a woman can like like a man you know click a like or or show that she's interested in a man so that he can then respond to that that works but at the same time let him do the work as I mentioned before, you know, we are the ones that pursue, I actually didn't talk about this. Okay, no, P, this is a P, it was PS, this is PPS. <laughs> More stuff showing up. For men, being the masculine energetic, we are in, in ancient terms, the hunter, we pursue. We are the ones that seek the goal, we pursue it, we achieve it, we're done. The feminine is more of the attractor. The way a friend of mine uh, described it was, is the man is the manifester, the woman is the magnetizer, meaning that women attract, draw in what they want, men manifest the action to go get what they want, and they can make it happen that way too. What's this got to do with dating? This is why a man's masculine heart stays alive when he is pursuing you, the woman. So if you take that out of his hands, he basically moves out of the masculine because he doesn't have to do any effort. When you are inviting that and keep inviting him so he keeps going because it's not like if you just drop one one hint and he pursues you don't do anything else it's like he's gonna am i really on the right track so give us clues along the way that's a gift you can give the men just to say that i think that that was it so that was my little added bonus piece on the back end i hope this made, made some sense this one is kind of a piece i learned from from studying with with david ader especially and um yeah, it's big stuff. Anyway, so I've got a few books to recommend if you're interested in checking out some of the books besides my own one. I'll leave my book in the comments. And again, the link for women to reach out to talk to me. Um, and again, if you have questions, comments, let me know in the bro let me know let me know below the broadcast. And if you want some help, reach out to me over social media or use the links provided. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate you being with me as always. This is a daily commitment I make to talk on Facebook Live. So there'll be another topic tomorrow. And that'll be episode 789. No, that'll be 790. Wow, okay. Let's see what that's going to be about. So with that, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me, with me as always. And uh, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.